earthwork calculations. Well, when calculating earthwork using land desktop, it's a surface to surface comparison, so we'll compare the existing and the proposed to get our earthwork volume number. Now, having said that, earthwork is one of those functions within land desktop that requires some prep work first. First thing we have to do is we have to have two surfaces created. I go to the Terrain Model Explorer and I look and I see I've got an existing and a proposed ground surface. I also see the contours displayed on the screen represent the existing and the proposed. Now the first thing that I have to worry about is do the contours on the screen actually reflect the surface that's in the database? I don't know. Why don't I know? It's because the two of them aren't tied together. Anybody could have come in here and started grip editing some contour lines or, or trimming some contour objects to get them to look the way that they feel that they should look, but maybe that's not necessarily reflected in the surface itself. So right off the bat, I'm making some assumptions in, w here when I calculate earthwork, work, which could be a dangerous one. So let's start. If I'm going to calculate the earthwork, I have to go through a number of steps. Underneath terrain, I'm going to have to go down and I'm going to have to set a stratum where basically I'm going to associate two surfaces with a name. So we'll call this total. Give it a description. We'll say overall earthwork computation. And we will compare surface one existing ground to surface two proposed. All right, so there's our stratum that's put in place. We'll come down then to terrain. Next thing we have to do is define a site. So rotation angle zero is good. We'll pick a point to the lower left. M size, let's maybe do a 10 foot grid. N size, 10 foot grid. And then we pick a point in the upper right that will encompass both the existing and the proposed. Change the size of the grid squares. I zoomed, which I lost it on the screen, but we'll say OK. No, we don't want to change them. Erase the old site outline, very layer dependent. Uh, yes, no, it doesn't matter. We didn't have one. Site, the name of the project is called Project E. That's fine. And we see the box that we'll be using to compute the earthwork. From there, we'll come down and then we have to start computing it all the different ways. Grid volumes, where we'll calculate a total site volume, then a composite, then the section. Then we can take and run a, a volume report. All right, so a fairly involved process. If it's something that we don't do every day, it's you know we'll probably have to uh, go back and look at some notes or work with somebody else to make sure that we have the process correct. And then also because there's no tie between our contour data on the screen and the surfaces themselves, you know we uh, we have to wonder if the data that we're actually using to you know the surfaces we're actually using to calculate the earthwork are represented on the screen with our contour lines. So let's, uh, let's take a look at a similar process in Civil 3D. So we're going to flip over to Civil 3D. I'm in a blank drawing. And you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate earth, the earthwork using the two surfaces we just looked at. So I'm going to go to Land Desktop. I'm going to drill down into Project E. And I'm going to import into this drawing existing ground and proposed ground. So we'll say OK. The surfaces have been migrated. We'll zoom extents there's both surfaces. Now they have uh, styles associated with them so let's grab this one it is the existing ground surface we will adjust its properties here such that it is a one and five foot background and we will grab the proposed and the same thing we will adjust its properties perhaps such that it is one in five design. All right, so we've got our existing and proposed ground surface. The surface, it looks like, although the contours didn't reflect it, there was some triangulation around the outside, which should have been cropped off. For now, our proposed doesn't extend into that area, so I'm not going to worry about that for my earthwork calculation. But certainly here is an example of where the contours on the screen may not be an accurate reflection of what's in the database when it comes to using land. To calculate earthwork, we're going to come over, that is, a, we're going to perform some analysis. So we're going to say Analyze. Then we're going to go into Volumes. And the dialog comes up on the screen for us. And what it allows us to do is create a volume entry. So literally from that point, it's going to be three clicks. Create a new volume entry. I'd like to compare the existing ground to the proposed. And I'm done. 
So it immediately computes the earthwork, and I can see that as it relates to earthwork, the net is 18,005 yards, 18,000 yards or so I'm long. So I've got some uh, additional material left over. So I've got more cut than what I have fill. All right, so just that quickly. Now the other thing is the surface is dynamic. So if we were to go back and start making edits to the surface, raising things up, moving things down, our earthwork would update accordingly. Now, generally when we do earthwork, especially if I'm off 18,000 yards on a project of this size, somebody may ask the question, well, hey, you know, I don't know if I really trust those numbers. Is there, you know, can I, can I do an analysis or whatever to start to see where the cuts and where the fills are? Land desktop, we had, uh, we could color range by elevation. We could put in grid ticks. We can do something similar here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a surface here. So this is going to be a special surface. It's going to be a uh, grid volume surface, very similar to the grid method in land. We'll call it grid. Uh, displaying it on the screen, I'm going to display it as maybe elevation banding 2D. And the grid spacing, maybe 10 foot in the x direction, 10 in the y. You know, very similar to the same settings we would set up for a site. I'm going to compare the existing ground to the proposed. And if I had any expansion or shrinkage values I'd like to put in. Very straightforward. We'll go ahead and say OK. It will process. It immediately shows us the result of our calculation. Anywhere we move on the surface, we can see what the elevation is with respect to cut or fill. So I've got a cut of about four and a half feet. Here I've got a cut of about uh, eight. In the areas that are blue, I've got fills that are about three and a half down to fills where it's less than a foot. All right. So analysis, very straightforward. Calculating the earthwork, very straightforward, very fast. I can also come down uh, reporting maybe take the new surface that we created for our grid and let's take can we we can export that to XML you know what let's come down and make a report from that so we're going to go into the report manager for surfaces and we're going to do a surface report and you know what? It wants a, the most accurate earthwork calculation is going to be a composite one. We did a grid. Let's do one more. We'll do it uh, the composite method. That's what we'll need for the report. So this will be a tin volume surface. We'll call it composite. So even though we're working in Civil 3D, we still have the ability to compute the earthwork a number of different methods and then compare them much the same way we would in land. The difference is it's significantly faster, the process is a lot more intuitive, and it's certainly something if I'm not calculating earthwork, but once every uh, several months, it's I'm not going to have to go back and be reading any notes or trying to figure out how that works. So let's check out that surface report now. We'll go ahead and execute that. For our surface report, I'm going to glean some information for the composite. Maybe uncheck some of these other guys here that are unnecessary. They don't exist in the drawing anyway. We'll come down surface for composite. We'll say OK. In this case I don't necessarily need to export it back to land desktop because the I'm not actually taking it back into land. Instead I'm, I'm processing the report so what we'll do is it's going to generate that information, it's going to bring it up in a table for me, and I can go in and modify the settings for my company name, but I see it's surface composite. I can see the maximum and minimum cuts and fills, number of points, triangles, information about the existing and the proposed ground, which were compared against each other, as well as what my cut, fill, and what my overall is. All right, so much more in depth than the three line report that we used to get in, in land desktop. The uh, variables that we have here, the settings with respect to the uh, number of decimal places could certainly be adjusted, but a, uh, a, a much more professional report than what was avail available to us otherwise when leveraging land. So with that being said, when it comes to earthwork, using Civil 3D as a tool to supplement our land desktop workflow, we can very easily take surfaces that were created in land, migrate them into Civil, calculate the earthwork, 
can be as simple as three picks. We've got an earthwork number. If we would like to analyze that, that is just by changing the style on the grid or the composite surface, we can immediately see areas of where the deepest cuts and the highest fills are. We can move anywhere on top of the surface and get an idea of the elevation so we have an immediate heads up display as well as the reporting itself is, uh, is more sophisticated and more robust than what we had before. Keep in mind it is a dynamic environment, so once again, if the existing or the proposed information were to change, that information, our earthwork number would update as well. And finally, the um, uh, there is a stage storage extension that is available if we wanted to get some numbers with respect to a particular area. For example, maybe let's do this before I wrap this up. I've got an overall earthwork number throughout the project, but I'd maybe like to get an idea of what what's coming out of this detention area. Just to show you very quickly, I can throw a polyline around this guy, unlike land that would require me to start creating parcels, and if the parcel area didn't have earthwork, it could cause a problem here. We, uh, we can just come up to Analyze. We'd like to do Volume, a bounded volume. Select Surface. We're going to measure it off this one. Bounding volume is a uh, bounding polygon is going to be this guy, and it immediately tells us what our cut and fill is. So it's our net volume, net volume adjusted, so we've got about 11,000 yards of material that's going to be coming out of the, the uh, detention area. If uh, we were to take and proceed, like I said, there's a stage storage extension we could install as well that would then also give us the volume as it relates to what the capacity is within that detention area. So uh, more tools, more features and functionality, and certainly easier to use than what we were accomplishing uh, the same task within Land Desktop.